and I'm just I'm staying far for now just to show you what we've got how absolutely wonderful isn't that a glorious image leopard up in the tree feeding away on her impala kill we don't know who it is just yet it could be shadow it could also be Karula let's go and investigate awesome Well done, Herbert. Thank you very much. Everybody give Herbert a round of applause, but very softly, because we don't want to scare the leopard that's up in the tree. Magic. I bet you Herbert's got that big grin all over his face. Let's see if he's got it. Oh, he looks so pensive. There we go. <laughs> well done, Herbert. <laughs> okay, let's just have a quick look. He thinks it's Shadow. She's done an impressive job, if it is Shadow, getting that impala up that tree. Let's go and investigate a little closer. I'm just trying to figure out a good route here without making too much noise. All right. Herbie's telling me he must go around, but I want to stay this side because of the sun. What do you think, Brian? I think so too. We won't make her feel trapped. We'll just stop here. <coughs> uh, thanks, Herbert. We're going to stay here just because of the sun. I'm just going to let Herbert move away so that we don't make the leopard feel as though she's trapped with two vehicles on either side of her. So we'll stop here for now and just examine the scene in front of us. Who have we got here? Give us a look at your face, please. So it could be for new viewers, I mean this is just the most perfect way if you're starting out watching these live safari drives, what a perfect way to start off a morning with a leopard up a tree with a freshly dead impala kill. The question is, which leopard is it? It is most definitely a female, just judging by her size. It could be most likely one of two leopards. One is a Karula. The other is Shadow. My suspicion is that it's Karula. I've never seen Shadow being able to hoist an impala kill of this size up into a tree straight away. If she does hoist something, it's usually small. And it is usually after she's fed on it for a little bit. This is very, very fresh. Come on, girl. Have a quick look at us in this direction. There we go. It's Karula. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Herbert. <coughs> there we go. We have confirmation. It is indeed the queen herself with her beautiful face. Queen Karula. And that makes much more sense because I was going to be very, very impressed if Shadow had managed to do that. Karula, with all her power, is an exceptional leopard. I'm still really, really impressed with her that she managed to get that impala up that tree. It's a very tall tree. Imagine doing that 
you know, that impala probably weighs the same she does, if not a little bit more. And she's taken it up the tree with her teeth and her n claws. And lovely to have you on board, Katie, watching in the UK. It is fantastic always to hear from our newer viewers. Now, Katie has a question about the leopards of the Kruger National Park area, or the Greater Kruger National Park area, and whether or not impala is their main prey. Um, Katie, it depends upon the size of the leopard and the sex of the leopard. So generally with the females, like Karula, they target the impala and then smaller antelope like Steenbok and Dacre. So you'll probably find that it's somewhere in the region of 40 to 50% of their diet is impala, whereas the rest is made up of smaller things. With males, slightly larger, slightly stronger, you'll probably find a higher percentage is of their diet is made up of impala or slightly bigger things. Look at the way she's using her tail to balance herself there in a very, very tricky position. And Katie, the other thing is it's also seasonally dependent. So at a time when the impala are rutting, then the leopards have a fantastic time. So that's their breeding season, and the male impala are particularly distracted during that period of time. And what that means is that they're not as alert as they might otherwise be, and the leopards make a killing from, so to speak, of the various males that are not as focused as they should be. And then once we get to November, December time, which is when the females start to drop their lambs, they are either hugely heavily pregnant or they've got little stumbling babies with them and then the percentage of a leopard diet that is impala based goes up again. So it does just depend upon the time of year. And as we go into this drought, or we continue into this drought that South Africa has been experiencing, our predators are loving life. And Safari Hayes has asked the question that is, of course, on everybody's lips, which is, where are the cubs? So Karula, the queen of Juma, has two gorgeous seven... Is today the second? It is the second. They are seven months old today. Two gorgeous little cubs, a male and a female. I haven't seen them in about a month, and I'm sure she's hidden them somewhere safe. So what she's probably going to do, she's probably going to munch away on her impala kill and then jump down when she's eaten a little bit and go and fetch her gorgeous little ones. And just imagine the scene that we are in for as the little cubs start to struggle their way up into the smarula tree to feed off their breakfast. While well, we wait and see what Queen Karula decides to do and where she decides to go, it is once again a big cat themed drive. Let's jump on board with James and some gorgeous lions. I haven't been brave enough to ask Karula if I could share her hard fought for and won impala kill. Just look at this incredible view that we have managed to find ourselves. It doesn't get better than this. And the magnificent and very dainty Queen of Juma has just had a small choke. I think something, part of the impala, went down the wrong pipe. But she seems to have managed to right herself after a couple of gentle wheezes. Don't worry, Karula, I know the feeling at the moment. She's still looking a bit uncomfortable. She keeps casting off and looking to the south of where we are now, and I'm sure that's where her cubs are. And she's torn between going to fetch them and filling her stomach with a little bit more impala. And I'm almost certain that when she does climb down this tree and go and fetch those cubs, she's going to come in this direction. Marianne in Arkansas is thinking along the same lines. Funnily enough, Marianne, Brian and I just had exactly that conversation, that without the lower limbs of this incredibly tall marula tree in which we find Karula, Watching her hoist this impala would have been absolutely magnificent. I wonder if she managed it the first time round, or if there were a couple of oopsies before she got right up there. We've seen Tingana drop a few things and fall out of a few trees. Karula, I don't know, there's just something so incredibly competent about her in all aspects of her life. She probably did it perfectly in one go. But it is a tremendously impressive feat. I mean, she must be, what is that? 
10 meters, 12 meters up in the air, probably even higher. It is an enormous tree. I would have absolutely loved to have seen her drag that impala carcass up there. And this is what makes leopards so incredible. Pound for pound, they must be one of the strongest animals that we get out here. To be able to lift an entire their body weight up into a tree is just astounding. You can see she's eaten most of the rump. Sorry for those of you who are a bit queasy or a bit sensitive of stomach, because this is a fraction gory. She's eaten away most of the rump. She hasn't even, I don't think she's even put, pulled out the stomach contents. Perhaps a hyena was lurking and she had to do this in a hurry. Either way, she's done an amazing job. Now she's using her rasping tongue with this backwards facing spurs, just like your house cats, to find a good way of going about eating this impala, getting the, rid of the fur before tucking in properly. Well done, girl. Just letting us soak in this incredible imagery for a moment. it's safe to say wow at that point we've just had the most incredible oh there she goes is she gonna go and fetch the cubs now Ooh, oopsie a tricky spot my goodness look at the agility mr henry could take some lessons from karula in the tree so could brent of course <coughs> both of whom have shown a certain lack of grace in their tree climbing endeavors. Oh, I'm just going to casually stop here on this branch with gravity against me and clean my paws. Can't think of a better spot. <whistles> Fastidious as always, she's cleaning the residual blood off her face and blue butterfrog in terms of her kill and what remains of it, I don't actually think she did remove the stomach contents, which is relatively unusual. Usually when a leopard makes a kill, and lions as well, but very often with a leopard, they pull out the stomach contents, the indigestible intestines and stomach that have no nutritional value for them and actually just get a bit smelly. They remove them and then they drag the carcass away from them. Now as far as I can see, she's only opened up the rump of the impala and eaten from that area. I don't think she's actually taken out the intestine and the stomach contents. Well, the steenbok or a daker or a small kill, the leopard will actually just eat everything, including those stomach contents. They're not too picky. But I'm surprised that she hasn't, and it sort of is what led me to believe that she might have done this in haste. I also say that because as I drove in, I noticed some very, very fresh-looking hyena tracks around this area, and I wouldn't be surprised if while we're sitting here there isn't one lurking, lying up somewhere, patiently waiting for its chance to pick at the scraps. Making sure she gets all of the tree bark and meat and fur out of those all-important claw sheaths so that her claws don't build up any muck and then get stuck when they retract. She's like in a way, like a soldier, making sure that her weapons are clean and functional. I'm with you, Michael. I cannot wait. I'm, on the one hand, I'm scared she's going to disappear south of our boundary. On the other hand, she's got a fresh impala kill in a tree. She's going to bring the cubs back here at some point. And Michael's thinking along the same lines, just how extraordinary it's going to be watching Hosanna and Shungile, who are two little cubs, attempting to negotiate a particularly tricky spot but of course at seven months old they are much more coordinated than they were when they were little tiny bundles of fluff tumbling out of tree branches i remember brian and myself having the most incredible sighting with them when they were just a few months old falling out of trees 
That was terribly cute. Remember that, Brian? I do. When she nipped him on the stomach. Yeah. So cute. I can't wait to see them. I haven't seen them in ages. But we'll let the Queen have a chance to rest for a moment. Give herself a jolly good clean before she goes down. She is going to jump down as soon as she's finished her morning ablutions. I would say there's with almost certainty she's going to climb down and go and fetch those cubs. And I don't know how far away they may be. I strongly suspect they're outside of our traverse area. Because Herbert didn't find any cub tracks coming across. But you never know. Hello, gorgeous. We will come straight back across to Karula as soon as she starts to move. But for now, as I said, a predator-rich sunrise safari. Let's jump back on board and go and have a look at those delectable little monsters with James. Perfect timing as the queen makes her dainty descent. Oh, look at that. Oops. Sort of dainty descent. Sorry, shouldn't laugh. I couldn't do that. And there she goes. And now it is time for her to go and fetch the royal duo, I imagine. Although she's kind of torn. Breakfast, kids. Breakfast, kids. Can't quite decide. Maybe a rest in the shade, quick sniff around the base of the tree. Somebody doesn't seem to be in any rush to spoil her kids' free moment. Oh, there we go, Blue Butterfrog. I was wrong. She did remove the stomach contents. She's covering it now. Yes, it's still there, girl. Don't worry. Okay, she did definitely remove the stomach contents. Doing the typical cat thing of covering it up to hide the scent. You clever girl. She knows she's got to leave the carcass behind and go and fetch the cubs, so she's doing her utmost to make sure that it is still here when she returns. I think you got it, Karula. Yeah. Preparation for the morning ablutions, or continuation of the morning ablutions, let's put it that way. Just going to cover that up as well. She brings the cubs in this direction. Fair enough. She has just had a serious meal very quickly. sure that she covers up all of her waist so as not to attract unwanted attention. You can still see the little bit of blood around her neck and where she's been feeding. She obviously had her head right in that carcass. And here she comes. Oh, this feeling never gets old. She walks right past the vehicle. And off the Queen goes to go and fetch the Prince and Princess. I'm not going to follow her all the way through. I'm going to go and relocate her on Gowrie Main rather than trying to get through this very thick area just because I know exactly where she's going to return to. But while we loop around and catch her on the other side, let's go back to James and those lovely lions. Look everybody. It's been so long. You know the last time I saw them these little things were on a road called Elephant Carcass, they were on their own 
for a long time, for a few days. That was a good five or six weeks ago. So this in the tree is Hoshara, the young male. And then just below him, on the ground, resting not too far from us, Her ladyship, oh dear, <laughs> look at that, <laughs> look, look, going up the tree, this is fantastic, oh this is brilliant, I'm the world's slowest wildlife photographer. How cool was that, everyone? So Karula taking the last piece of meat there. Why well, is it so want? Why shouldn't she? Mom must eat. There she is with her little piece of leg dropped by her son. <laughs> Silly little fellow. Yeah, he's got a little bit more sinew now. Would you like some sinew for breakfast, Chandra? Mm. Nothing like a bit of sinew for breakfast. Hmm. That was just fantastic to see. Gee whiz. <laughs> Karula in front of us now moving with her leg. Obviously seeking out a little bit of uh, privacy. Oh, she's going to hoist this. No, surely not. She looked like she was going to put it in that dead tree. Let's just sit here for a little while and see if she doesn't pop her head out the other side. Otherwise we'll move around. She is going to hoist it. <laughs> How cool is that? No, not so much, not a good spot to go. That's brilliant. Now, I know it's difficult to know where to look in a sighting like this, but little Shongile is clearly a bit irritated by her brother and the fact that he is sitting there munching away. She's hungry. And she just keeps looking up towards Hoshana, her brother. So sweet. <laughs> Sally in Oregon, you want to know why I think that she hesitated to go up there? I think she hesitated, Sally, because she realised it was going to be a spiky and uncomfortable thing. I think she just try, thought she'd try it anyway, and then thought this is ridiculous and hopped back down into the comfort of the soft leaf litter. It's so very sweet. Right, let's just sit here for just slightly longer and then what we'll do is move around to the other side. Now, 
of sleep. Well, not quite. She's definitely hungry, you know. She wants to go up there. But she's just a little bit reticent. Chandra, shall we try the other side? Are you happy here? No, no, I mean just sort of 90 degrees round. Okay. Let's try it, everyone. I'm, I'm just not quite satisfied with where we're sitting. So while we're here, let's go across to the aunt of these two and their father. That's how it works with Leopard Society. Hello again, everyone. We've moved slightly. You can see a lovely, lovely view now of the little chief, Hosanna. And the kill made by his extremely adept mother. That is an adult male, or an adult impala. I don't think it's a male, probably a female. Can you see any horns there? All I can see is a bit of liver sticking out. Very, very rich source of nutrients, the liver, everybody. So if you happen to be a leopard, it's a good piece of food to get because it's not just protein, it's quite fatty. It's got some good stuff in it. And all the while, the little sister looks up, hopefully. Now, as we said, I've said before, and I know I've been fairly harshly contradicted by one or two viewers, which is absolutely fine. Uh, I don't think that... I've, I've never seen them feed together for very long. Yes, sometimes they feed a little bit together, but normally it's one or the other. And I think that goes along with the fact that they don't do an enormous amount of playing with each other. Noth nothing like the lion cubs do. And that's simply a function of the fact that they are leopards, which means that they're going to be totally solitary for most of their lives. A lovely blue sky above. Oh, look! What do you think she's going to do, Jandri? Do you think she's going to brave it or wait for him to get so full that he can't hold himself in the tree anymore? His belly is very full. You can see it there sticking out behind his left back leg. And he's got very sweet little legs and tail hanging out there. <laughs> they grow so they grow up so fast, you know, Jandre. And Jandre, just quickly, sorry, there's a batelier coming in in the same way that it did earlier. Look at it, flying right over the top. The same way that it did with the lion kill, definitely seen that piece of meat there. We'll think about maybe having some, but I don't think it's going to be able to get anything from this kill. Unsurprisingly, Jean-Dre, I didn't get a photograph of that battle here. <laughs> that is, isn't it? Yeah, the battalier would love to come in here and have a bite, but it realises with three leopards eating here, highly unlikely. Jandre was just saying to me, wouldn't it be nice if we had Big Cat Week during the winter time? Um, he's absolutely right, of course. Big Cat Week is in February, and we don't get anything like the views of the cats we do in the winter, because there's just so much greenery around. Photo yet, James. Of what? Of the leopard? The no. no, not with this lens and my skill. There is a hooded vulture also floating above. If you want to, Chandra. There we are. It's that small pixel up there. There you are. Well done. 
The leopards haven't moved, everyone, don't worry. Fear not. And it's come in for exactly the same reason that the same two species of bird arrived at the lion kill. And of course I have the ability to look both ways because uh, I can see what John Andre is filming and I can see the little leopard in the tree who was watching exactly what we've been watching. He noticed the vulture coming in. Carol, nice question from you. You say, why is he always first at the kills? I'm not sure that he is, Carol. Um, I think it's just uh, that when we got here, he was eating. It's quite possible that she ate a little bit before he did. When you say, is it a male-orientated world in the animal kingdom? It's a size-orientated world entirely, Carol. So it's just got to do with the size that these animals have. So he's now probably starting to get a little bit bigger than her which means yes he probably will start to feed more often than not before her because he'll just box her off the kills hmm? oh yes very nice Andre Ooh, he's got a seems to have a bit of stomach contents there he might be doing some bok drol spuch not too long from now Quite astounding sighting. Hmm. Does make one excited for breakfast, don't you find, John Ray? Hmm. Mm. Perhaps not for what he's eating there. I think he's there. You see, he's just opened up the stomach contents there. That's the rumen. So that's the undigested plant material that would have been stuck in the stomach. And he won't eat that, but he will eat the intestine from which it's come. Because it is very nutritious as well. We had a great question yesterday about how it is that a carnivore manages to get sufficient nutrients given that they only eat meat. And here you can see, well yes it is animal product but it is varied. In this case he's eating the intestines, he's got the liver and the kidneys and the heart and the lungs and eventually I guess his mother will crack open the head like a walnut and enjoy the brain, all of which contains various bits and pieces of nutrition crucial to the healthy survival of two little leopard cubs and their royal mother. Hello, Andrew in Vermont. Common query of, uh, about cats, big cats out here. You say, <coughs> thank you, Jean -Dre. Do do leopards get hairballs? Yes, I've definitely seen leopards get hairballs, absolutely. Um, they do, they lick the carcasses that, of the animals they catch in order to swallow the hair, which I think helps line the digestive systems in the same way that they eat grass sometimes to, for a bit of roughage. I think what you'll find is that they, um, that they, they lick the hair to clean it off the skin to a certain extent, but also to swallow some. But inevitably, they're going to get too much in and they will eventually have to cough it up. I don't know how much um, hair they get from their own cleaning, which is of course where a house cat gets a hairball, but I imagine there is some, but I've certainly seen leopards coughing up hairballs before. He ain't going nowhere, that leopard, is he? His sister, she just keeps looking up, hoping desperately for a gap. Much more well-mannered than her brother.
We might. Um, it's, we've got a little bit of time left. I think we're going to sit here for a little while and then we'll try one last reposition and get a nicer view of Shongile on the ground. She's lying very carefully in the shade, waiting patiently her turn. Okay, let's go back to Jamie and uh, find.